It's podcast Thursdays. Oi, what's going on, what? boys? You know, I've just noticed. You know, what I've just noticed. Wait there. The best bit it always happens before the show starts. Hang on. Matchy, matchy. We've got matching shirts on. It wasn't even planned either, eh? Was it? Where's oh, yours? Yeah. We've got a kit. Is this a kit? <laughs> yeah. Hey. I, I don't know, mate. I've got my bought for me. It was a present. Right, <laughs> <laughs> go. Dicko, have you got undies on? No, no yeah. naked, mate. I'm naked from that way from the waist down, pal. It's, <laughs> the, only way to, it's the only way to do a podcast. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> um, well, this, this show's got off to a good start. That's what we do best. All the tiny whiteies. How's um, your week, week been, guys? Yeah, good. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. How are you? Are you well? I'm happy it's nearly Friday, mate, and I can get right on involved on the old... Uh... Hey, speaking no, of being involved, Dicko, do you want to pass me a drink? We said we'd do yeah, it last week. Well, there you go, mate. Are you, uh, you ready? Yeah, pass it over, okay. mate. Oh, yeah, I've got it. Cheers, pal. Not bad. Cheers, pal. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't have worked any worse than that ever. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> mate. I do one. Yeah, go on, pass as well, mate. There you go, pal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I've had a good week. Pretz, I'll one. Oh, next week I'll get a bag of crisps here as well, and we'll make it a little show. Athlete. Um, yeah, I mean, football's been good. We, um, I, it looks like, well, I mean, that, that draw at home kind of killed the, the hopes of um, winning the league. At least we pretty much know where we stand now. Yeah. It's, in our, it's in our own hands going into the last game. Um, the playoffs here we come. Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be good for the fans. Are the fans allowed in, or uh, and, and any number of fans allowed in? Yeah, four thousand. Four thousand. So that'd be you no. Know, that'd be fantastic. Because you know, if we went up automatically, we you know the fans would miss out. So we don't want to do that, do we? No. No. Exactly. exactly. But um, but listen, we, we, we're not going to talk too much about the current crop tonight, uh, or at least not in the way we usually do, because we've got one of your old mates on. Uh, Adam Griffin's joining us. We excited about this? Can't wait, yeah, mate. What's the guy? Terrible, terrible trio. The Meerkat. His, his nickname, the Meerkat. <laughs> I can just tell you. I can just tell you. I can see his face backstage. <laughs> I can see at the bottom. And because it's popped wow. up on the screen like that when you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to bring him straight in. Yes, Cliff. Thank you very much. Hiya, mate. Hey, what's happening? Good, what are you wearing there, mate? What have you gone? Show us your outfit. What's this old top? Hold that from what it is. You've been in a loft, haven't you, for that? It don't fit. <laughs> it's yeah. a bit right around the midriff, isn't it? Don't fit. Don't hey, fit on the way. Extra medium. <laughs> Extra medium. <laughs> is it just me that he's froze on? Chris no, froze on me as well, mate. How are you doing, boys? Hey, it's that one of signal, mate. Scousers now. He's a scouser. He lives in he lives in Liverpool now, doesn't he? Don't pay his he don't pay his bills. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> Go and put a quid in the meter. You know he, he can't defend it to next door. Signal. Don't tell Joe I said that, mate. She'll do me in. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> Oh, he's gone again. <laughs> oh, he's changing the living room now. There we go. Any better now? Yeah. Hey, Kel T. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah, we're better. We're better. We're a little bit better now. We'll persevere. Let's kick, let's kick this off in the most professional way we know how. Delighted to be joined uh, by Adam Griffin. Adam, welcome to Stop All Kind of Life. How you doing, mate? Good, thanks. Good. Just well away from Stockport and away from them too. So I've moved to, <laughs> I've moved to Liverpool away from them. Just from these two, that's all it was. <laughs> How are you doing? Spent a lot of time, me, me and Griff spent a lot of time together at County. And uh, yeah, other than obviously, we, Matty, Matty, was, Matty was one of the close mates there, along with, with Rainsy. But uh, me and Griff spent probably the most time together at, off, off, the, off the field, um, hanging out together, playing, trying to beat him on Pro Evo. Uh, at Krispy Kreme, basically we just ate lots of food, Krispy Kremes, Nando's, you name it, we ate it, ha Haribo Shrubs, 
We just I don't know how we're yeah. athletes, to be honest. Griff, uh, are, you, are you able to? Um, not a big. <laughs> are you are you able to confirm these reports, Griff? That, uh, that the local sweet shops were raided on a regular basis. Oh, definitely. Yeah. If not, we were selling it to all the school kids on the street. Six and everything. <laughs> selling 20 p a cig it was. <laughs> Jesus. Well, listen, you've, you've come back at a time where, where the club's flying high. Um, you know, we were challenging for the league this season. Playoffs, it's to be. Um, have you been keeping an eye on the on the club? Little bits and bobs, really, yeah. Um, you don't really good signal around here, anyway. <laughs> it's frozen again. But yeah, I've been keeping a little eyes on because obviously there's one or two lads who are thin off. So. So, um, oh, oh. 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 Hey. Oh. oh yeah. Like a passport. Touch, 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 touch. No, it's gone. <laughs> right, Griff, can you try it on your phone? Don't have start. you have you seen this man? All right, we're gonna have to carry on without you, Griff, I'm afraid, mate. We'll have to rebook re you next week. Fucking oh, hell, what's happening here? <laughs> right, fuck <laughs> see you, Griff. Don't let him in again. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's not Griff. Play the sport cards. See, seeing, seeing as you know him quite well, and we've teased it, we've already teased that he's on the show. We'll let you answer for him. I reckon you could probably pre predict his answers. What What was your favourite moment of playing for County Griff? Probably playing with Liam Dickinson. <laughs> <laughs> is he uh, nodding? Is he nodding? He's not he's even not there. Come, he's gone. Come. He gone? Come. All right. He's Pull the fast one. Yeah, he'll have, 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 have to do next week. He'll have, um, have to find someone who pays their pays uh, virgin bill. And do, you, uh, do, you reckon, do you reckon he was just having his on because he didn't want to do it? Do you reckon he was just giving it the old... Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I reckon so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, fair. fair. He, do, you know what, do you know what it was? He realised he wasn't wearing the right shirt. Oh, well, I never left out. It's yeah. been no one happened to me before now. It happened to me a good few years ago. I was in the same situation and... I felt left out, so I just ran. Yeah, but Dicko, that was when you were running out onto the pitch. That's a bit different. Oh, hi, I forgot about that. <laughs> anyway, something happened a couple of days ago. It was, it was a bit of an anniversary a couple of days ago of a certain game, wasn't it? You're going to have to refresh my memory, mate. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I, think was, I think it was just, a, just a, I think it was just a small game against Wickham Wanderers. Um, oh, was that, was that the one where? Um, that lad scored for us, that, that Liam Dickinson. It's to be fair, it depends on the tackle on the halfway line, but yeah. <laughs> Basically, that defender got him a move. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you watched that goal back? Today. <laughs> <laughs> About six or seven times today. Yeah, I showed everyone. I used to play football, me. Just a fat dad now. Speaking of good goals, the club have released the goal of the season compilation. Which I don't right. Tell me, tell me if I'm tell me if I'm singing out of tune here. Should they do that before the season's finished? What if we see an absolute worldie on on Saturday or in the playoffs? It won't matter because it's in the playoffs and they'll be buzzing anyway. Yeah, but what about this Saturday? Uh, this Saturday is not the playoffs. Yeah, a bit, a bit premature. They've got it should have been a weird season. They probably they delayed this. This should have been done ages ago. So you yeah. remember you play they're playing catch up with everything. So. It gives, the it gives, they'll have an award. They will have an awards evening booked in, um, regardless of the of the playoffs. I think we had, um, if I, if I remember rightly, I think we had our, our um, awards evening before the end of the season. Anyway, um, oh. I'm pretty sure with it because I got, I think I got managers player. Jim gave me a uh, managers player, and I don't know who got players player. It wasn't me. I got I got fans player, a man and managers player. But I think. Or was it? Was it the other way around? I think no. I think I think I got players player, and Gaz Owen got managers player. Yeah, which, it, it was before the end of the season, though. Which yeah. award? Because the only point of reference I have to go off from this, right, is when I was playing A as a kid, and B like the shitty jokey trophies they give you at five aside for like most improved. 
yeah, played with the most hangovers this year and stuff, right? Um, so what trophies don't make the cut from going as a kid into the uh, in, into the big league, if you like? So, so you say they're like um, the, the most important player, and they used to give it to the kid who was a sub most weeks, or yeah. like the uh, no, you have. So you have you have managers player of the season, players player of the season, and fans player of the season. And you're probably a lot of clubs have like Clubman of the Year, which is like someone who's, you know, been there at every game, helps out behind the scenes, you know, maybe a kit man or um Oh, he's you know, gonna get it, isn't he? He's gonna get it. No, no, not if, not if I've got anything to do with it. <laughs> um but yeah, your Clubman of the Year is someone who's you know put the hours in over the years and just a bit of recognition and a bit of thanks for that. But the the main three are players, player, um, uh, manager's player and, and fans player and obviously you get like a goal of the season as well I think I remember rightly I think Ashley Williams got that for a, an absolute zing from about 30 yeah, uh, 40, yeah, 40, yeah about. I remember unbelievable he's got absolutely no right to shoot from there what on earth no, no, no. you should just head right. it where he's <laughs> in the air on the floor he just needs to head it Ash and he's just picked it to the top bin out so I think he got the, he got the goal of the season for that I got I got leading goal scorer as well I think I got, I got lots of way with three and would you both agree, again, from the outside looking in, I guess the big one that you want to get is player's player, because that's like the respect of the people around you? I can't um, remember if they did that, to be honest. I remember getting young player of the year, 18, 19, but I can't remember player's player, manager's player, maybe because I didn't get it, I can't remember. I think player's player, I don't know, because the recognition of the manager, because the manager's, obviously, for, 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 for me, it's quite easy for a player, because... If a goal, if a, if a striker scores thirty goals in the season, right, he's got obviously he's getting it. Players just vote for him, but a manager obviously sees different aspects of the game, defensively, goalkeepers. I mean, look at look at you look at City, and um, you know they've they've just they've just been won the league. They've got De Bruyne, one of the best players in the world. You know they've got Gundogan, Gundogan who's played unbelievable, and uh, Ruben and Diaz has just got right as player of the year. A defender for a team who just scored so many goals, so it's it's uh, for me the players will usually just pick the like the leading goal scorer or someone who's like stood out massively. If it's not the leading goal scorer, well, a manager's got a different choice for me. I think we, f- we forgot to ask him when Adam Lafondre was on a few weeks ago. I, me and Adam used to play for the same team when we were kids, and I voted for him in Players Player of the Season. I should have asked him if he voted for me. I bet Apparently, he did. He said to me, "Yeah, I voted for I voted for Chris Player Player Sport." He said, "Just keep yeah. on down because I don't want to boost his ego anymore." <laughs> I could have done with it. I used to play a net. You see, I was a keeper, and um, yeah, we lost we lost more than we won. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, Alfie, Alfie, Alfie was a keeper as well, like in five or five tournaments and stuff. A bit of a cat yeah. in net. Yeah, uh, so I've heard. So I've heard. But to, to go back to to go back to it, we, we were talking about goals of the season. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna think, I, I'm gonna try and predict Matty's for him because I think I, I think there's a standout here. And to be honest, if I'm right, I'm probably I'm, I might be inclined to agree with you. Adam Thomas's goal in front of the Cheadle end, right at the beginning of the season, yeah, first game, first one on that list, and it is an unbelievable finish. John Rooney's from the halfway line is going to get more plaudits, but yeah. what a strike from Adam Thomas. Yeah, we've got a fair few, haven't we, this season? We've got we've had some great goals. Um, yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably go the other way, Chris, to be honest. I'll probably go with Rooney's me. I think the audacity to attempt it and then uh, execute it, um, it's taking nothing away from Adam Thomas's goal whatsoever. Cracking strike, yeah. coming in off that wing. Um, a rocket to wow. set, set the boys off for the season. But I think um, I think there's a, there's a vision element with John Rooney's. I think to get your head up and have a little, have a little look, and then to attempt it is cheeky enough, but then for it to be executed, uh, it's such a difficult thing to do. You know, yeah. it could quite easily go wrong. Everyone turns and says, "What are you doing?" You know, you know. But yeah, I'll probably go. With, I'll probably go with John Rooney's me. Couple of uh, a couple of other notable mentions: Mark Kitchen, who has really had a season dogged by injury when he looked so so good at the start of it. Uh, his goal on BT Sport, of course, with his weak with with his weak foot, where he's pinged it into the far corner, what finished. John Rooney, you could almost make a John Rooney goal of the season highlight reel with some of his strikes on those. He's got a free kick against Boreham Wood. Richie Bennett scored a good goal against Rex at home that yeah. <laughs> doesn't get... It's one of those. And Dicko, let, let me pick your brains on this one. When you watch it on the highlight reel, you think, it's all right. 
it's not going to be goal of the season, but it's the build-up play that led to it. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? And, and you see these, you'll see like, um, for example, Premier League goal of the season or whatever, and there'll be um, five or six or seven contenders. And, and I guarantee you, two of the contenders, not fantastic goals, but it's the go- it's, it's the, the build-up play. You remember the Arsenal goal with it with um, yeah, it was, you, you know, it, the, the three flicks in a row. I mean, yeah. the, the finish was like a tapping, but the build-up was probably the best I've ever seen. It's like, you know, just one touch, one touch in the air, um, and that's a big part of it. You know, it goes under the radar. It, people forget about. We just want to see rockets and rockets in the top bin. Are scoring from the halfway line, but that build-up play is just as important and just as, you know, just as nice to watch. How about you, Matty? What what kind of goal do you think is the uh, is 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 the ultimate? I, I agree with Liam. I think um, from a manager perspective, that's what every <laughs> gaffer wants to see. You want to see that one two touch football carving the team open. But I, me personally, when I watch when I watch a goal, I, because I've played the game all my life, I, I look at it from a difficulty perspective. So, how difficult was that to convert? You know. It might it might be a side foot bottom corner from ten yards out, but if the angle's awkward, uh, or or it might be making a connection on a fast hard cross, they're not easy. You know, they're, they're, Liam will know that from from doing it week in week out. You know, a lot of times they can be skied over, you can miss it, it you can take your eye off the ball when these defenders in the way. So those little things that that people like Liam make look easy, they're not easy. Um, so those type of goals. <laughs> I think, from, again, from a gaffer's perspective, it's what they do week in, week out. You do it on a training ground. You see so many... Uh, you saw one the other night, for example, I think it was... Um, was it Fulham? Uh, cr- cross and buried, buried the head. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see it? So, I mean, that... How many times, Liam, do you do that in training on Friday, Thursday? You might, yeah. you might, do, you might do 50, you know, just get get, a, get those yeah, wing just wing just to deliver it. Yeah. And you might put seven or eight of them in the bottom bin with no pressure on you, but do it in a game. Things change, don't they? You you, you watch people like Cavani doing that in games, and it's like it makes it look so easy, but it, it, it takes so much practice and you know constant training and constant just just rep- repetition. And you'll watch him and his movement. And it's just like it make it makes it look easy. He's in the right place at the right time, but that's years and years of practice. Um, so it's for like 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 Matt says, you know. The, the, the difficulty factor, and you know what would be interesting? Assist of the season, yeah, because save, you, save like, the season as well. Yeah, assist of the season, save the season. Of the season. Assist of the season. You, you, a lot of people have forgot about all these. They'll see the goals going, but they forget about the, the you know the the, the defense cutting passes and you know pinpoint balls. The, obviously, like they, they go under the radar because the goal, the goal scorer gets the glory. Yeah. Are you, you know what? Are you, Sorry, go on. Rick. No, no, I was go on. going to say, uh, those assists, if they're not converted, the, the nine times out of ten from the untrained night, they forgot. So, you know, if De Bruyne whips the ball in uh, and Jesus or Aguero bangs it in, a lot of a lot of praise on De Bruyne. What a delivery. What a, if he doesn't score, you know, so it's what a delivery, but then he forgot about you know, yeah. until yeah. somebody scores. There's a lot to be said for the, the conversion at the end. It does shed a bit of light on the assist. Um, I, I, A long time ago, I did, I did quite... Quite a lot of work with Real Madrid, and um, and their stats guys. They used to talk about Meza Urzil, who who was, I think he just left. I think he just left, and they would often talk about something called the pre-assist. And I mean, how far back do you go? But it's 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 what makes the whole move happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so like, let's let's say if you've got a deep line midfielder, for example, who's intercepted a final ball, taking it round a couple of players. And then played it around a fullback so the winger can cross it in for the striker to nod home. You yeah. could argue he's done more than anyone in, in doing that. But it's a pre assist. Do, do you know what I mean? How far yeah, back? How far is it? Then you've got the pre pre assist for the person who, who's, who's won the first initial tackle. It, it can go it can go all the way back. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I saw that, 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 that on, a, on Ozil. I think, I think that's the art of punditry, clocking those things. You know, it might yeah. might be a it might be a good clearance that then leads to somebody like Liam breaking free and scoring. You know, I saw, I saw some stats on that Ozil, and it's his assist ratio is fantastic. Um, it's yeah. one of the best in Europe. One of the best in one of the best in Europe, honestly. Is yeah, that that that, that when you've come out with that, then it didn't surprise me at all. Prime yeah. example, Liam. You know your goal at Wickham. 
You know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get, 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 great goal. Brilliant, brilliant goal to watch. It wouldn't have and happened without Gary Dickey, mate. It wouldn't have happened without Gary Dickey's tackle, exactly. No, it's, just, it's, just it's, it's, on, the, on the halfway line. Why? Exactly. Well, it's why. He, 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 won, yeah. he, he, he made the first the, the first interception and he could have exactly. just he could have let it go to the defender and send the midfielder and, and, and he's been persistent but, but, and he's, tra- he's, 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 he's chased him down, got the second block in but and then you it's fell to William Williamson. Yeah, but then you won the 50-50 as well. So does that mean he got the assist? Oh, now is it my turn? <laughs> I think Mike Williams got the assist. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I tell you what. Listen, because because we were supposed to have Griff on tonight, and technical yeah. gremlins, been, he was in briefly, did a cameo, uh, and then left. I'm going to put us put us all on the spot a little bit and and do the emergency backup plan. What we've we got in the envelope. Right. Okay. Goal of the season time. Uh, we've got to try and whittle down the best three goals that you've seen in a Stockport County shirt. Right, okay. It could be from when you were playing, from before you were playing, from more recently. It's got to be public, obviously no training goals or whatever. Although if you do have a standout one from training, you, you can feel free to tell us. Right, okay. My best goal that I've seen probably would have to be Gleason. Yeah. I almost, I almost want to say we're not allowed to use that one. It's, right, okay. uh, we're not allowed to use that one. Um, Wickham away again. Keith Briggs about oh. 30 odd yards out. Zinged it, top bin. Ran the, ran the, the length of the pitch to the, to the, the other end to the, to the county team because the county fans like with his hands up like that. <laughs> that, was, that was up there with one of the best I've seen. How about you, mate? Uh, the obvious one's Gleeson. Um, so if we're taking Gleeson's out of it, I think Liam Liam's at Wickham was was right right in the mix. Um, Greg Tanzi scored one v Northampton. Uh, we went down, I think, the game after, but which was horrendous. But he scored a fantastic goal from about thirty yards out. Uh, Vinny James Vincent scored a nice volley against might have been Hartlepool from outside the box. I think um, Danny Pilk scored a good one. Might have been v Huddersfield in the Gary Ablett rain, I think. Uh, I mean, you've got probably got a handful yourself, Liam. That you know that you could put in that mix. But yeah, I think they they're the ones that stand out to me. Yeah, I suppose it's not just about an extraordinary goal; it's about importance as well. Yeah. yeah. Some of them are some of them are last minute. Some of them nick your win. Some of them are right on top of the playoffs. Some of them, uh, you know, might keep you up. You know, there's plenty. Yeah. Do you remember Adam Lafondi's bicycle kick? Yes, yeah, I, I haven't seen that. Yes, I do. It was unbelievable. I want to say Wrexham. Was it Wrexham? I think it we might have been Wrexham. It was, it, was at, it was at Esley Park. I think it was Wrexham, yeah. 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 Unbelievable. He, he did, he did. That, that one is the kind of one that, I, for me anyway, I just always think back to that goal. But there's so so many to, you know, to pick from over the years. There's one I remember Sean Connolly scored. Yeah, well, fullback, right back doesn't doesn't score all that many goals. Um, he scored a goal against Middlesbrough in the in the what was then the Coca Cola Cup when County went on the big run in the nineties, which was silly. I mean, if you watch it back, I, 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 we we had him on at the start of the season, and even he said, was saying when he looks back at it, he's thinking, "What the hell was I doing?" I, he just got the ball in the right back position and he's just run, and run, 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 and he's, he found himself in somewhere he shouldn't be and just carried on going. Yeah. But for me, there was a goal where I, I, memory might be misserving. I think it was Swindon, and he scored a header from really far out, and it's kind of gone over everybody and into the loop. The keeper, yeah, yeah, just looped over everybody. And I remember being in the cheetah end behind it when it went in, and it was one of those moments where I don't know, it just sticks with you. Do you know, like when you were there, you were unbelievable. I tell you. Uh... I tell you one, I've just just sprung into my mind. Ollie Johnson's left foot chip v crew. Remember that one, Chris? Um, he, he chipped the keeper v crew. We beat him four three at home last game of the season. Did the keeper come quite far out and he's put it over him? He's on his way out. Left foot though, he's right foot. He's on it, Ollie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I, I think I remember Alan Law talking me through it. Yeah, it's brilliant. I will tell you one of one that stands out for me as well. Um, Adam Proudlock to complete his. I think he was to complete his hat trick. Wickham on the mud bath. Yeah, yeah. You remember? Yeah. Um, and he's, he's, I think I've made a tackle 
in our own box or on the edge of it, our 18 yard box. And I've played it out to him, and it's just this the keeper's obviously off his, about his 18 yard box, and he's just hit it, not lobbed the keeper, he's just gone round the keeper and he's used the, the surface and he's just zipped straight in. That was for his attribute, but that was from about 35, 40, yeah, about 35 yards out. Great finish. He's technically very good, wasn't he? Adam. Oh, he was fantastic. He was, he was um, so his technique was class. But he, for he, my, he, um, that, that technique was better. <laughs> for my for my brother's stag do, uh, seven eight years ago, something like that. Uh, we went to Barcelona a few days. It was amazing, unbelievable. And we went to the new camp and watched Barcelona. We were sitting right behind the goal, and they get a free kick. Barca get a free kick right in front of us, right. There's obviously only one man stepping up um, to take it. The greatest player in the world, Leo Messi, puts the ball Ronaldo. down. <laughs> save, save that for when Adam Proudlock or someone can't get on because of technical difficulties. Right. But yeah, um, okay. So Messi steps up and there's a decoy in there. I think maybe Fabregas or someone at the time. But it's obvious who's going to take it. And uh, everyone's like gone silent around us. Messi steps up and... I mean, if I'd known Griff was going to drop out, I would have tried to dig the clip out. But we filmed it on my phone anyway, because, you know, that's what you do. And um, Messi steps up, and just as he's about to take it, all silence around us, my brother, who's had a couple of scoops, goes, Tanzi! And it's whipped straight in. It's gone straight in the back of the net. <laughs> Unbelievable finish. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and it was just, I think, me, my brother, and two other guys in the whole stadium Got that reference. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so um that's up there for me. I could I could dig out the messy goal. I'd have to I'd have to find it during the week on YouTube, but I bet you got you got a, you got a voice over yourself going, Tanzi! Tanzi! <laughs> Hold the note though, like a great off. Tanzi <laughs> <laughs> Look how sophisticated. So, so what we're thinking then, um playoff playoff wise. <laughs> What uh well what? lads we are we are on the yes we'll yeah we'll be there yeah uh, with the fans I'll be in I'll be in the pub social distancing of course but we'll be in we'll we'll, we'll be in and amongst them all I think I think uh when the final comes around the final's in Bristol yeah, uh, where are? Ashton Gate yeah 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 uh, Wembley's in use um so um I, th I think, listen. I, usually, usually, I would say, "Oh, we can't, we can't risk it. Don't jinx it." Blah blah. blah. I'm so confident in the strength of our team at the minute. I just can't see us. Uh, the unbeaten run is what 16 games now. I ca I, how can how can you be anything but 100 percent confident going into the playoffs? We're, going, we're going into the playoffs in form, in fantastic form, and that's the best way to go into them. You know, if if you if you start dropping points going into the playoffs and and losing games, that's when you start getting, you know, the little, um, you know, little things in the back of your mind. Oh, you know, the, the worries and the and the fans start, you know, worrying as well. And you know, people around, you know, have they dipped in form? Are they are they going to mess it up? And we've not done that. We've 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 took it. We've, we've, we've grabbed the ball by both horns, and it's it's enjoying. The lads are enjoying themselves as well. You, they know they're in the playoffs. No one's smitten in. They still want to win. Still want to score goals, and they want to finish the season high. Um, and it's, it's it's fantastic to be around, and I'm I'm just excited myself. Do you know Do you know one thing that makes me think it's a happy camp, apart from everything you just said? Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I, I, I can I can say this because of because of what was said. Obviously, over the years, not just this season, but you always speak to some players, not even just in football, in other sports as well. And if you have a private conversation with someone and, and they tell you they're not too happy about things, obviously that tends to stay between the two of you. I had a quick catch up with Jamie Stott. And, uh, you know, saying, how's it going, everything else. And he was still really up for everything. Do you know what I mean? He was still just buzzing to be to be there. Listen, when he signed for County, you expected him to be slotted in first team every week. Yeah. It's not worked out for him under the new manager. It probably wasn't really working out for him as best as it could have under Jim before that, but he was still getting some game time. I spoke to him and I was half expecting him to be a bit dejected and a bit, but, you know, he was saying all the right things. Like, he speaks... He speaks regularly with the manager. The manager still rates him really highly. It's just a very competitive squad at the minute, blah, blah, blah. And he was just like buzzing for the lads. Can't wait to get back involved. Opportunities come and go. You've got to wait for it. Everything else, everything else. And walking away from it, I was thinking, 
that tells me it's a really good basis. Cool. He could have told, he could have told me oh, I'm sick of it. I'm not playing, but he didn't. Do you know what I mean? That's also says a lot about him as a character, though. Not just the the the, the camp. It shows his professionalism. You know, because regardless of a happy camp or that, it takes a lot for for someone who's not playing come up to a playoff as well. Because I've been there myself at, um, at Geisley. I was in the playoffs and I couldn't get in the team towards the end of the season. I you know, dipped in form and I was getting five minutes here, ten minutes there. And we're in the playoffs and I'm thinking, you know, I haven't got many years left here and I want to be playing football. I want to. Be, I, I, I might not get this, chance, this opportunity again. And I couldn't get in the team. We played filed away. Um, we played filed at home. Sorry, um, we beat and we played filed away. Um, we, we ended up getting through to the final, and it was it was tough being on the bench. Um, it was hard, and it was at my age. I want to be playing football. I want to be scoring goals. I want to be. I want to be in, in amongst that. So it takes that professionalism to kick in, and it, it, for me, obviously, it did. It, I, I trained. I helped the lads out as much as I could. I supported them on the side. I was, I was screaming, you know, instructions to the strikers, to defenders, doing what I could do from from my position. Um, and I was lucky enough to get my chance. Ollie Johnson was was ill in the final, yeah, and about my about I started him, and, and he brought him up after half an hour. So I got that opportunity to play in another playoff final. But deep down, it's hard. It's tough, and he will be suffering because he'll want to be playing, not just in the playoff. He'll want to be playing every single game. So it takes that, that that shows a lot of character for me and a lot of professionalism from him to, to you know to be to be speaking so highly about the manager, uh, his teammates, the camp. So it's it's fantastic that someone who's not involved and not getting the game time they want to be getting is 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 so so high in spirits. Guessing you echo that, Matty. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there'll be a little bit that he won't be telling you because as a footballer, he, he'll want to play. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Mm. He, he, won't, he won't ever portray that. But the fact that, like you say, he's got a bit, still got a spring in his step. Um, it sounds like I don't know the lad personally, but it sounds like a good lad, and it sounds like you know, it's nice to see <clears throat> good things happen to good people. So you know, with a bit of luck, his chance will come and he'll take it, and and he'll look back on himself and think, you know, I'm glad I kept my dignity there when when things weren't quite going for me. Um, and it's all for the greater good. I mean, and, and let's have it right. He, he's he's in it. He's in a very strong squad at the moment. He's in a yeah. squad with all eyes on him. Um, who have got a great chance of going up. So playing or not playing in his career, that that's a, it's, a, it's a great position to be in. Yeah. You know, he could he could he could be next season. He could be lingering around the bench, pushing for a starting position in League Two. So it's a great position to be in. You've um, it's a it's a lot easier to be high in spirits and accept. When when your team are doing well, yeah. When you're not doing well and you're not playing, it's it's, it's a lot harder to accept. So he's got to, he's got to also understand that the, the lads are playing well. They score, the, you know, the the the, the winning games, uh, and they run a good a good um, good form at the minute. So he'll know that in the back of his mind. He sounds like a professional lad. So yeah, you, you just got to bide your time and wait for you, wait for your time to come. And and it's football. Sometimes you might get. 10 minutes to shine and that 10 minutes could change well, we lost you for a brief moment but you came back listen I want to I want to move on now because we've got back. you're back you're back um, I want to I want to move because we're getting to those end of season vibes and we kind of know what's happening um, you, you've got my, my, my brain whirring with this um, greatest goals of all time and stuff outside of county right let's let's pick some of the easy goals Premier League, top five goals since it started. Most people watch this on a Friday evening. That's a good conversation to have on a Friday night over a beer. What are we going with? Uh, I don't know, you know. I, it depends what you're going for. If you're going for quality of finish, are you going for importance? The, I hate to say it, but the Aguero's up there with, with, with one of the best Premier League goals ever because of the importance of it and, and how it probably defied City as a club um, and changed their, their whole you know, Traje what, what, trajectory, yeah. Um, for me, it was it was horrendous. I was at, I remember being at the uh, I was at the Manchester Velodrome. My daughter had a cheerleading competition and I just swerved it. I was in the in the bar, there was a, there was a TV on one end what with the United on 
from a lot of United fans. There's a TV at the other end, the City fans watching City. Recipe, United, recipe for bad news, that. Oh, mate, United fans were buzzing. Way champions. Next minute, Aguero! They had the place erupted. The, the, the Blues were all over the place. The, the, the United fans were trying to throw chairs at them. It's a cheerleading competition downstairs. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, for... For for Premier League goal, that's probably the the most well known goal I think for me. The the up there, the number one most well known important goal. Uh, but there's so many. It's I'm so many. Say it's controversial, mainly because I don't like Man City, but also just because it's it's relevant while you're talking about it. Rudy's all red. I think that goal was very good and very important and everything else. However, I think it's going to be more remembered for the iconic commentary. Over yeah, it. yeah, possibly. Yeah, it's 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 like the they think it's all over. It is now. It's one of those sound bites of commentary that will stick through time. Yeah, even, even if you forget exactly what happened with the goal, you'll remember that. Whereas a goal like Giggs Dennis, is Bergkamp, with Arsenal. Dennis Bergkamp versus Newcastle, Ryan Giggs yeah. versus Arsenal, you remember that goal. I can't remember what the commentator said. I remember yeah, the ball. the ball going the wrong way and breaking the laws of physics. Do you know what I mean? I re- that's what yeah. I remember. You remember, uh, uh, you remember Ryan gives his chest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ru- Rudy against Newcastle, the volley. That's was got that, to be there. Was that the one where he, had, he, he gave a rollicking to the referee? He was with the referee, were he? Saw his ass, turned round, and just hit the ball as hard as he possibly could into the top <laughs> corner. Go it, on, was like, it was like he was scripted. <laughs> Give us, give us some of your shouts, Matty. What do you mean in Premier League or world football? You go world football. Go, you, you, it's a threat. Oh, I know we're doing world football, mate. World <laughs> free kick. be up there? World football. Um, the one that stands out to me, I think my favourite, probably my favourite goal was Zidane's in the Champions League final v yeah. Leverkusen. By Leverkusen. Oh, he my put, he plugged it out of the sky, but with his left foot. His right left foot. foot. Wasn't it? Um, the other one, I mean, well, well before my time. Do you remember George Best? The is it San San Jose earthquakes? Stockport County legend George Best. George Best, yeah. Remember the chop, 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 chop. Just probably, yeah. probably in the you know the end of his career, he's pretty much lost it, but just showed that little glimpse of what he was about. Uh, one of the best goals I've ever seen. Um, but I mean, my my favourite Premier League player, Thierry Henry. I could I could name you ten, twenty. That he yeah. scored that, that nobody could get near. I remember when he pinned Irwin, somebody wrapped the ball into him, he just pinned him like he was a little doll, chipped it up on the volley, and just. just yeah, Bartes. 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 yeah. Just, that was up there, but that was a good one. Yeah. It's just, just absolute I mean, filth. I remember it just like. It was. <laughs> you've, got, you've, got to have, you've got to have Beckham in there, Beckham from the halfway. Yeah. Yeah. Who scored the first ever Premier League goal? Don't know. Oh. I'm not sure. Don't know. Brian Dean. Brian Dean. Brian Fact, Dean. Facto. But I can't give you the full stat because I always get mixed up. It was either Crystal Palace or Sheffield United. Can't remember. It was one or the other. That's mad, that, isn't it? Some fact. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. All right. Well, um, Adam Griffin, it was nice of you to join us tonight. Cheers, Griff. Thanks, Griff, mate. I had, a, I had a message come up off him halfway through this. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, it's gone off saying sorry something about whatever happened with the signal. But... Yeah, sorry about that. Not paid the bill this month. <laughs> Just reset the router. Not sure what's going on. Yeah. So say what's happening. Mrs. unplugged it. And she said, nope, he's not having any fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's probably going. Mrs. is a legend. Well, uh, well, listen, we'll, we'll get him back. I t- well, I'll tell you what we're going to do without mentioning any names. We were going to have another iconic name from, the, from recent history on in the next couple of weeks. Maybe we try and get them both on together. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll try and get on next week. Try and get on a raise next week. Certain Hopefully case with of some, uh, with some tennis elbow that we'll reference next week or whenever he comes on. Loads of beer. <laughs> yeah. By the way, this has gone down. I mean, I only had a couple of swigs, but it's really nice. What is it? Just Vimto. No, it's... Um, it's, it's it, no, it's um, cheap stuff from the off-licence. <laughs> I don't know, whatever the, whatever the miss is going, but it's nice. It's got a yellow label on it. Oh, he's froze. He's gone getting some. Um, listen, Matty, it's been um, it's been a treat as ever, boys. I think we should wrap it there. 
Yep. And then we like should stuff. if if they're at I tell you what, I tell you what, what we'll do next week, we'll review greatest goals, greatest county goals of all time. So if people are watching this on YouTube or Twitter or whatever, get your get your clips in. Yeah, get your opinions in. Get your opinions in, and we'll review them, and we'll yeah. say where they stand on the list of greatest goals. Gleason's going to be hot, you know. <laughs> I think Gleason. Again, it's important of the audience. I think I think Gleason will be up there. There's, yeah. There'll be some. There'll be, I think I'll be. In, I think he'll be in the top five. Listen, Gleason, Stephen Gleason's goal, and I say this in front of two bona fide county heroes that I've been that I, I paid to watch on a number of occasions. Stephen Gleeson's goal is the greatest goal, not just county goal. Stephen Gleeson's goal is the greatest goal of all time, full stop. So that okay. shouldn't that shouldn't be allowed in the comp. We already know that's one. Right, okay, yeah. So that's so, so that's we should, okay, you know, what else is up there? Because like Matty said, it ticked every box. It was it important? Hell yeah. yeah. Do you know the, what I mean? The technique, the difficulty. Exactly. And it yeah, it had that audacity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You naughty boy going for that. He tried, anyway, he tried, it, he tried it in the second, second leg as well and shanked it. <laughs> he ran off, he, he zooms into him, he's running off smiling. <laughs> he knows, he knows. Well, listen, boys, whatever you're up to, have a great weekend. We'll touch in next week about this live episode. I will get my um, I'll get my, my organisational head on and, and sort something out. And we'll and, be, uh, and we'll, we'll just let the fans know that we'll all be allegedly having a beer in the playoffs with all the fans <coughs> getting involved. Oh, well, I, I, well, I will be anyway, but might I'll be on Red Bull. <laughs> I, I can't stand Red Bull; it's horrible. Unless we, unless they want to sponsor us, in which case, gives you wings. <laughs> <laughs> and, it goes, and it goes great with Jägermeister. <laughs> Yeah, it does actually. Yeah. All right. I can have it then. Yeah, I can have it then. Um, all right. Well, listen, fellas, thank you very much for joining us. Over and out. We'll cut it there. We'll see you next week. Go again. <laughs>